Yo, what's up, Warriors? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. This is the third installment of a three-part series we're doing on the three phases that you're going to experience when entering into a romantic relationship with a psychopath narcissist. They are the idealization, love bombing stage, the devaluation and decline stage, and the one we're going to be talking about today, phase three. This is the discard and decay phase. This is when shit just hits the fan. So if you're watching this video for the first time, just know that it's part three of a three-part series. I have the links for those videos below in the description and you can also check them out at the end of the video uh, during the end tiles. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the love bombing stage. It's very important and uh, definitely educate yourself on phase two, the devaluation and decline stage because that's when things stop making sense for you in the relationship and um, things start getting pretty bad from there. It never gets better. Like it's one thing I can tell you, it never gets better. Um, so make sure you fully understand those so you can have a better grasp of what's going on right now. If you're still in the relationship with a psychopath or uh, if you recently got out of it, hopefully these videos help you understand what's going on, what the craziness inside your head, in your thinking, in your spirit that has been completely crushed. Um, I think these videos will help you guys realize what really happened so you can get out, get back out there, go on with your life. So if this is your first time in the channel, uh, we really appreciate everyone's support here. Subscribe to the channel. Share these videos with anyone you think um, could, could benefit from this information. And if you like what we talk about here, definitely drop a like on the video to help get some more exposure on YouTube. So let's dive right into phase three, the discard and decay. By now, in your relationship, and your toxic relationship with a narcissist or psychopath, you're at this point of desperation because you've been devalued, you feel like a piece of shit at this point. The psychopath sees you as a piece of shit, which is why they're doing this. They have already groomed their new source of supply. They're probably already in a relationship with their next victim. And they really don't even see you as, uh, as boyfriend or girlfriend material anymore. They still hang around with you, but it's just to extract supplies, just to continue playing the role, it's just to continue torturing you. By now you know you're probably not having sex with them, so you have to wonder why you're even in the relationship if you're not even having any type of intimacy. By now you realize that they don't like anything about you because they're always talking trash about what you wear, what, how, how you speak, how you style your hair, the things that you like, features about you, you know, human features and traits that make you who you are as an individual that were attractive to them at the beginning, that were probably attractive to your previous uh, partners, suddenly are hideous. You're not getting the attention you used to get. You're walking on eggshells. You've been seeing the cracks in the mask of the psychopath by this point, and you're really scared of seeing more of it because what they've shown you up to now has been scary and has been enough to, to keep you at bay. But once you enter phase three, all bets are off. Things are really gonna get bad right now. This is the phase where you start seeing who they really are. This is the phase where you can't even recognize the narcissist anymore. You can't even recognize who this person that you once thought was your soulmate and now you can't even recognize them for who they are. They're completely different. They speak differently. The tone of their voice, the way they carry themselves is completely different than what you were used to. If when they met you, they didn't drink alcohol because maybe you didn't drink alcohol. Now you realize how they're always drinking whiskey and rum and they're always pounding. Now it's when you start seeing tantrums come out over Little things that you might do that any human being does, but they use that as a way for them to just explode and scream and yell at you and just cause a scene, even in public, a lot of times, especially in public. 
just to get that attention from everybody and to scare you and to create a sense of dread and a fear that if you ever, ever cross that line with them again, if you ever dissatisfy them, if you ever dissatisfy them, if you don't please them and you don't meet their requests, they will scream and rant and break things and scare the fuck out of you. That's what you're going to see. And that's what you're going to feel during this phase. That anxiety, that crippling anxiety that's going to overtake you, it's because of this. This is the final stage. This is the grand finale. This is when they're going to leave you at your worst. They will crush you and leave you like a vegetable in your worst possible state where they know that you have very, very little chance of recovery. That's when they're going to just deliver the final blow and dump you in the most inhumane way or cheat on you in front of you to make sure that you witness it and that you witness how they didn't give a fuck that you caught them. They will laugh like the Joker laughs. They will do cruel things that you would have never imagined or fathomed that this innocent angel that you believed and, and trusted and, and gave your heart to and opened up your soul to how they could possibly do these things to you when you've been nothing but humble and good and kind and caring, right? This is what happens in phase three. And the reason it works this way is because, once again, it gives the narcissist that sense of supply that they get, that they know, and they're validated in their mind, in their delusional little head, that you were a piece of shit and that you deserved to be mistreated and you're not good enough for them. And since they've turned you into a shell of who you used to be through the devaluation of phase two, you've become this very needy, this very fearful, walking on eggshells type of person that turns them off, that puts them off, that they don't even like, they don't even want to associate with you. But they created that. They made you into what you are now by destroying the good things in you. The solid, that life source you had, that spirit that caught their attention, that light, that shining light of your soul that they don't have but they want, they robbed you of it. And now you're like a carcass, just rotting away, still searching for validation, still hopelessly waiting for the day where they return back to their original state, their original form. But you guys, I can't state this enough, that original form was just that, it was a form. It was a masquerade. It was a mask they were wearing. It was a character they were playing in their own movie. It's not who they really were. All those memories, from the beginning of the relationship, you have to destroy them, eliminate them from your mind because they were not true. They were created to trick you and to manipulate you and to put you through these three phases of doom. That's why they did those things. So when you're in phase three, when you're in the discard and decay phase, there's no going back. You're never going to see that innocent person. My ex used to tell me, that she was a snake, but there was at one point in her life that she was a bunny, but she became a snake. That was her way of projecting and, and revealing her true colors in her romanticized way. And I figured it out too little too late, but I guess it's never too late. I mean, once you get out of this relationship, it doesn't matter when you get out, as long as you get out, you still have hope to live a good life. Um, but to use that, to use that analogy, this narcissist, this psychopath that discarded you, that dumped you in the most sickest way, is a fucking snake, is a demon. They're never going to be that innocent little bunny rabbit again. That's never going to happen because they never were that innocent little bunny. The snake, the devil, the demon is able to shift forms. And they shifted their appearance to you with a purpose.
but now all bets are off. The mask has come off. You're seeing them for who they really are. And if you don't know that what you're seeing is a psychopath at play, you will still be haunted and doomed by their spell long after they discard you. Because you see, there's two parts of the discard and decay. That's why I call it discard and decay. There's the discard where they get rid of you or force you to break up with them in, in, in the sickest way that they, they leave you no choice. But then it's what comes after, how you start decaying even after the breakup because you don't know what's going on. If you know, if you know that your ex was a narcissist and you've done the homework and you've read the books and you've watched these videos, you've engaged with the community, you've worked with a mentor, you will turn your life around. It's going to take some time. You have to put in a lot of work, but you will turn your life around. However, if you do not know or if you are unwilling to accept that your ex was indeed a psychopath narcissist, then you're going to continue to decay and to decline and eventually disappear. You won't know who you are anymore. You won't be able to appreciate good things anymore. You won't be able to engage with other people. You won't enjoy life. And the psychopath makes sure they discard you at a time where it's going to hurt the most and leave you in a state of complete devastation so that you can't recover from it. Because what ends up happening is that you go crawling back to them after the discard, after they've humiliated you, after they've betrayed you. You will still reach out to them and you will still provide them with what they need because you're still locked into that Stockholm Syndrome. You're still locked into that narcissistic spell and you still see them as your savior. And they know that. Believe me, they have others just like you that are still sending them money. They're still sending them checks. They're still hooking them up with opportunities because they still have some sort of hope, some false hope that their narcissist ex is going to come back to them. It never happens. If you let your narcissist psychopath ex back into your life after the discard phase, they're going to crush you 10 times worse. The things they do to you after is worse than what they did to you while you were going through this phase. It's actually worse because now they have, they have lost complete respect for you and they barely put any effort anymore into convincing you or manipulating you or, or somehow tricking you into do things for them. Now they blatantly treat you like shit and make demands. And it's sad how, how many victims still comply so if you're watching this right now and, and this is resonating with you drop a like on the video so we can support the channel and comment below and let us know what you're going through because I assure you that somebody went through it too as a matter of fact most of us went through it because the patterns are all the same and yes, there's more information now about narcissistic abuse than there was four years ago. There's still not enough. There's still not enough. So you're not going to be getting the validation that you need. And I'm not talking about love bombing validation. I'm talking about true, heartfelt, human being, emotional validation that what you went through was a narcissistic, toxic relationship. What you went through was psychological abuse. If you haven't been through this situation, you don't get it. So you can't just talk to your friends about it because unless they went through it, they'll never understand. They'll never give you that validation. They'll want to take you out for beers. Some stupid shit like that that doesn't do anything. You have to surround yourself with people that know what this is about so you can discuss it freely and openly in a safe place 
And that's where you're going to start rebuilding that trust again. You're going to start recognizing who you used to be. You're going to want to become that person again. That's going to be your motivation. And you're going to realize that you're not alone. Everyone that went through a narcissistic, abusive relationship went through these three phases. Everyone that got out of the situation had the trauma. And everyone who has recovered and turned their life around will tell you what a blessing it was. And how much better they are now as individuals. They've attracted better people into their life. They're in a better relationship than ever. They're able to spot red flags. They're able to call psychopaths, narcissists. They're able to stand up for themselves whenever they're being disrespected or manipulated in any way. You become a really amazing person once again. So it's definitely something to, to commit to, to take action, to do the work. Because it's not worth just living the rest of your days in panic, with anxiety, rotting away, hoping that the ex is going to return, hoping that that nice person, that, that great relationship that you once had would once again resurface. No, these, these predators are out tormenting others already. They already have a new source of supply. They probably already have two or three lined up. To them, you're a piece of shit. They do not respect you. Do not confuse yourself. Do not lie to yourself anymore. Stop it right now. Call them out for what they are. You have to get them out of your life or they will continue tormenting you. No contact is very important. I talk about it all the time. I even put together an ebook that details the five steps of going no contact with a psychopath narcissist because I know that as long as these predators are still looming around your life, and poisoning your mind and, and sending you venomous texts with bullshit, you're not going to be able to heal. So if you want to check that out, it's absolutely free. Just click on the link in the description below, right here on the screen. This is the website where you can get it and download it straight to your phone or your computer. Um, you're going to get a lot of value out of that, I promise you. And um, if you got a lot of value out of this video, please subscribe. And drop a like on the video so we could uh, continue growing in numbers. This is the anti-narcissist army. Psychopath exposure. We expose narcissists and psychopaths. We help each other grow out of this nightmare. Thanks for sticking around for this three-part video series. Be sure to check out the first two if you haven't already. And definitely comment below on how the discard phase was with you. How you were discarded or how you terminated the relationship, how they forced you into ending it, how bad things got. Definitely share that. It's important that we share and um, we get all these stories out because they need to be told and people are willing to listen. It's very helpful, very helpful. Um, this is the therapy, probably some of the best therapy you'll get is right here in this community. Um, we keep it real. This is no nonsense, no bullshit. Um, I know you guys have it in you to uh, definitely turn this around. Again, thanks for your support. Hope you're doing well. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. And I'll see you guys in the next video.